Filipino nurses make up the biggest group of overseas nurses currently working in the NHS. Hello! You are in the cold UK! And in 2020, the Barking, Havering and Redbridge Trust are welcoming around 250 of these valuable and much-needed Filipino nurses. Hello! Senior mentor Beverly Soar of the intern team is the main point of contact for nurses when they land in the UK and is always on hand to help them settle into their new life in East London. When the Philippine nurses land with us, we've been having them land in quite large groups. We have all their accommodation ready for them. We have food already in their flats for them. Their uniforms are sorted. Everything is planned. OK, who's the leader of the group? A cohort of 32 new recruits from the Philippines recently arrived in Romford and are preparing to start work across the Trust. We have a programme for them where they practice with the education team for their OSCE that they have to take at a university. They don't actually go on to a ward until they have passed their OSCE. Today, senior nurse Taz from the intern team has come to see how they're settling in. Hi, guys. You all right? Whilst they rehearse for their Objective Structured Clinical Examination, or OSCE exam. OK, what station is this? OK, cool. A practical test that has to be passed by all non-EU foreign nurses before they're allowed to work on UK wards. Thank you, nurse. You're so lovely. OK, I'll be right back. They are practising for their OSCEs, which they will be going for in about five, six days now. I will lay Tony flat on the bed. Then I will pull the emergency call bell. In order to pass the exam, they need to follow the steps um, and cover all aspects. The practical exam assesses each nurse's ability. And have you been timing? Yes. Yeah. It's the job of Sister Samina Burton to get the new recruits passing their exams first time so they can start work on the wards as soon as possible. Who's doing the first one? So, so time yourself for 15 minutes. Stay calm. You'll be fine. Okay. Today is rehearsal day for the exam, which will be timed, so these nurses need to get up to speed. I'm going to use the orange garbage bag to remove the dressing. So, Mary, is that okay with you? Lovely nurse. Okay, I'll just do it slowly. Is there any way that I can make you comfortable? Not really, nurse. Not really? Um... Just waiting for my injection. I'm now going to proceed in cleaning your wound. Thank you, nurse. That made my day. <laughs> we can have a cup of tea later. Oh. You did really well. But you, you did, did really well. Did really well. well. Did Give an encouragement. Oh, yeah. You can do it. Oh, yeah. Yeah, so that was really good. She did really well. Um, she has gone over her time on that, so it's a 15 minute um, they get, and she has, she's did it in 20. So just need to speed them up. It's now up to Samina to get these nurses ready for their exam in just five days' time. In the UK, more than 12,000 Filipino nurses work for the NHS. But before they're allowed to work on the UK wards, they first have to pass an exam. So time yourself for 15 minutes. Timer on now. Having recently passed the exam, newly qualified Angel Toledo can now work on the trauma and orthopaedics ward. Hi, Helen. You all right? Yeah. Awards specialising in patients that have suffered bone injuries, fractures and other breakages, okay. often in old age. In the Philippines, when you have a nurse in the family, it's really big. It's a big deal. But in the Philippines, um, even doctors um, were not really quite compensated very well. So when you choose to take up nursing, it's always with uh, the dream that you can go abroad and practice abroad because it pays better. Foreign nurses are really important to the smooth running of the NHS but there's always a real danger that they return home. Senior intern Beverly Saw knows the importance of trying to keep hold of these valued nurses. Philippine nurses are very well trained. Hello, good morning. My name is Angel, your nurse today. They're very, very caring nurses and they fit in with the way that we work in the UK very well. After only four weeks in the UK, Angel is up and running and caring for patients. And she loves her job, especially when working with elderly patients.
Kiss me and you'll be doing very well. Okay. Yes. So from Monday, Angel is not sleeping in real anymore. She's going to have her own room for patients. Yes, of course. Have you got any concerns about that? I, have, for her to I have no concerns, but even if she's not sleeping in real, we're still here to uh, support yeah. her, of course. So has Angel been getting patients ready for theatre? Is yes, of course, yes. Picking them yeah, up? Yeah, all yeah, of yeah. that is done? It's all done. Excellent. Yeah, discharging patients, yeah. transferring Seven patients. Months. Yeah, all of it. She's done it. After initially struggling with a new way of working, it's a, it, it's a new morning. And being closely monitored on the wards. Okay, um, so I'll just see what it is that you two go for the medications, all right? Angel can now work more independently and can get on with caring for patients. Today, she's looking after 75 year old Keen Gardener George Kirby. Hi, good afternoon, George. Who arrived in hospital after slipping in his garden and breaking his femur. How are you? Yeah, fine. Good. But how is it? Are you still in pain today? When I'm low. Oh, yeah. And we got traction, so that's kind of... Well, you have to put your traction because if your bone is close already to your skin, that's right. so it has to be kept um, immobilized. So let me just attach this one. This might just be um, a little squeeze. Okay. All right. So see ya. Oh, she's been very polite, very willing to help. And on an earlier shift, Angel got to grips with the tech too. So I have now the first observations documented. <laughs> it's this easy. And she deserved a well-earned break. How's that? Um, yes. So I'm going to the office actually. Uh, I'm going to that break. Yeah, sure. Okay, no Should I keep it in your pocket? It's fine. Thank you so much. All right, so I'll get my break now. But only if she can master one other piece of tech. Indiana Jess, Beverly has come to reassure and support her. How are you getting on? What challenges have you come across? The major ones is really um sometimes having trouble with the equipment. You nervous about that? I'm nervous being um uh, by myself because I'm I'm afraid I don't have the full responsibility in my actions. But when it comes to equipment, well, I need to be confident. Or you always have to make sure that you have to be confident. So, you know, sometimes you're not going to get that confidence until you are doing it on your own. Exactly. It's like being, as we say in the UK, thrown in at the deep end. Yeah. Because you have to swim or you sing. You know. Angel's senior mentor, Beverly, is keen to find out if Angel can see her future in the NHS. How are you getting on? I'm good. Are you? Yes. Nothing that you're thinking, oh my goodness, I've got to do that on my own next week. There's nothing like that. I, I think that I have the support that I need. I can count on many steps in here. Uh, and you know you can call us as well. Yes, and uh, I can always refer to whoever I need to call. Uh, I think they'll always be there for me. Good. It's been a tough start for Angel. But she's happy she has the support of Beverly and the intern scheme to plan her future career in the NHS. Beverly's been really awesome since day one. She's been very supportive, been cheering us on that we can make it. We really did. And even something this small, she keeps on keeping keeping an eye. She visits us from time to time. Yeah, keeps in touch. I'm just enjoying the privilege of working in the NHS. Thank you.